Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. I'm going to do a second video. This is my second video. And I want to add to the rebuttal that I did to Dr. James White in his response to my video about the Christian God's selfishness. There's a part in the video that I believe um, I should have done a little bit more. So that's why I'm doing it in this video to further debunk and expose Dr. James White. So let's see what he says about comparing the mercy of Allah to, uh, to Christianity and will debunk and refute him, God willing. So let's continue. Okay, so it will start with my um, claim about how Islam has got the best justice compared to the Christian God. Let's have a listen. I always say the best justice is in the justice of Islam. Everyone pays for their own crimes. No cowards in Islam. As they say, you do the crime, you pay the time. Okay. Then how are you going to stand before a holy God? What do you have to give to a holy God to pay for your sin? What... What filthy rags do you have to offer him? I mean, I know. Uh, well, you know, you've got the scales. The scales are against you. Um, why are the scales against us? Every single worship that we do on the face of the earth, whether it's prayer, whether it's charity, whether it's doing all of these good deeds that we do, these are giving us good rewards. So why would you say the scales are against us? If we are getting good rewards, then we're going to be judged uh, by both the mercy of God and by the determination of the scales. So why would you turn around and say, oh, uh, that, can't uh, that can't pay for the, for the, for the um, uh, you know, for you to go to heaven? I mean, what is wrong with that? Of course, the scales will make you go to heaven. That will give you the mercy and the forgiveness of God. So how can you sit there and say that the scales do not offer anything? Of course they do. Well, uh, you know, you can put the shahada on one side and that'll outweigh all the sins in the world. What is the moral and ethical weight of saying the shahada without atonement? Uh, he's making a false conflation here. The shahada means in Islam that if you give the shahada, it doesn't mean that you're basically going to have all the sins removed. It doesn't mean that you're not going to face a trial. If you came on the day of judgment and you had all of these sins on you, yes, the shahada is going to give you Jannah because there's a hadith that promises believers that if you have a mustard seed of Iman in your heart and you are a sinful Muslim and you have lived a, a, a life in disgrace and misery and sin but you still had an Iman in your heart then the Shahada will be your door to heaven, your door to mercy. So you may go to hell and pay the punishment there. See? In Islam, you're not a coward, unlike you as a Christian putting it all on Jesus, right? Where a Muslim pays the consequence in hellfire. Not all Muslims, of course. We're talking about the sinful ones that lived a life of sin and they need to purify themselves by going to hell and getting punished. Similar in your Western system. Your Western system, you go to jail for a fair share of time and you come out. So it's a basic punishment. So that is much better from an Islamic point of view where you do the crime, you do the time, and you're not a coward in Islam, unlike you Christians who put it on Jesus. Law remains broken. Saying words means nothing. What, how what do you mean saying words means nothing? You know that saying words do mean something. And that regardless if you sin and do all of these things, if you believe, as you believe, you say you believe in Jesus Christ, that apparently you're going to go to heaven.
if you believe in the testimony of Christianity. So what do you mean words don't mean nothing in Islam? Of course they do. The shahada means something, and that is your salvation. How can you, as a sinner, buy your own redemption? You seem to think you can do it. But having said the shahada, how many times do you have to repent even after that? How well, well, that's okay. Human beings do sin. And of course, they're going to repent. And they sin and they repent. That's the way it actually works. Because in Islam, it, it is... The, it's the basic theology is that one of the conditions of being forgiven is if, if you don't go back to that actual sin. You know, if you keep repeating the sin, it's a sign of hypocrisy. So obviously, there are conditions. And even if I have to repent, I need to do it. But if I still have to pay the crime, I'm still going to pay it. We have something called grave punishment. We have something called punishment in hellfire. Right, it is all a purification. We even have worldly punishments. So you know, <laughs> to conflate that, to conflate your view of blaming Jesus and putting everything on Jesus, then trying to conflate it with Islamic theology to say Islamic theology doesn't make sense because you can never pay for your own sin. That makes no that makes no sin a sense. We can actually deserve the mercy of Allah by doing good righteous works. So, and like I said, at the end of the day, it all comes to the mercy of Allah. How is it you, st you continue committing the same sins? You who are married, how often do you mistreat your wife? How often are you selfish toward her? You don't do the things toward her you need to be doing. How about your children? Look into your own heart. You know it's true. And you think these religious things are somehow going to avail before God, before a holy God whose standard is perfect righteousness? Really? Do the crime, do the, crime, do the time. You don't want that. You do not want that. You see, the difference is... In but you do it on Jesus, yeah? <laughs> you say you don't want it. But you put it on Jesus, so you make someone else go through it instead of yourself. I mean, look at the hypocrisy, and this is why we call them cowards. This is why we call them selfish. They would rather make the human nature of Jesus, that poor human nature of Jesus, go through the punishment of their own crimes so they can then wash their hands clean. This is why Islam has the best justice. It doesn't put this evil sin on another person and tell him, no, you have to pay for it. And then just because I'm just going to say, f I forgive, you know, I'm, I, I, I forgive. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, God, for what I've done. You know, please forgive me. But you know what? Make someone else punish for it. I mean, come on, that's just disgraceful. And you think these religious things are, are somehow going to avail before God, before a holy God whose standard is perfect righteousness? Now, let's listen to this part. We'll take it a little bit back. Look at this. Look into your own heart. You know it's true. And you think these religious things are, are somehow going to avail before God? You know, look how pathetic this argument is. He's basically trying to say nothing that you do will avail in front of God. The only way everything is going to be avail is if someone dies for it. Someone needs to go through a harsh consequence in order to be forgiven. But let's look at what the Bible actually teaches. If we go to Luke 7.46, it speaks how Jesus was already forgiving people's sins. Uh, it says, Luke 7.46, You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven, little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Notice what 749 says, Luke. It says, The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this? 
Who even forgives sins? Someone's asking, who is this person that is forgiving all these sins? And Jesus, by the way, is doing this while he's still alive, folks. So he's not even going to the blood sacrifice to say that he needs to die in order to forgive your sins. And Dr. James White says, oh, how can you pay for your sin? How, how? So he's, Dr. James White is trying to push this narrative. The only way we can gain God's mercy and forgiveness, the only way is if someone dies for it. It's not, you know, uh, your religious testimony alone, or you can't stand in front of God with all these sins, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, what words don't matter. But look what the next verse says. Verse 7, uh, 750, Luke, it says, Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace now. Have a look. Jesus earlier, he says uh, in verse 48, then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. And why was her sins forgiven? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Now go in peace. So basically the Shahada, the Christian Shahada, saved this woman from the damnations of hell. She's now going to paradise. So where is Dr. James' narrative? Oh, you know, let's listen to James. What is the moral and ethical weight of saying the Shahada without atonement? God's law remains broken. Saying words means nothing. Well, apparently that those words that the woman said, the belief in Jesus meant something. And that was enough for her to be saved. She didn't have to believe that Jesus had to die for her sins in order to be saved. What? How can you, as a sinner, buy your own redemption? Well, that woman in the passage of Luke brought her own redemption. She believed in Jesus, and that was sufficient, and her sins were forgiven. You seem to think you can do it. But having said the Shahada, how many times do you have to repent even after that? How, how is it you, you continue committing the same sins? So there you have it, folks. This person has absolutely no idea what he's talking about, even according to his own Bible. You see, the difference is, in Christianity, you have something called mercy and grace. But that mercy and grace does not violate God's law because God's law has been fulfilled in the cross of Jesus Christ, the very thing that you reject. Now, is there mercy and grace in Christianity compared to Islam? No, there actually isn't. Did you know, according to the Bible, that there is something called an unforgivable sin? And that is a sin against the Holy Spirit. If you sin against the Father or the Son, you are forgiven. If you sin against the Holy Spirit... You are not forgiven. It's an unforgivable sin. So how do you even compare that to Islam where Allah says all sins are forgiven? That's in the Quran, that all sins are forgiven. Now, Christian apologists may say, oh, well, um, all sins aren't forgiven in Islam. If you die in shirk, uh, you're basically, it's an unforgivable sin. However, that's a complete misinterpretation you can even be forgiven for shirk but you need to ask for repentance before you die if you don't ask for repentance for shirk then of course that sin will never be forgiven however in christianity even if i sin against the holy spirit and even before i die and i ask for sincere repentance and say look i swore at the holy spirit i disrespected it i blasphemed his name if i do that i can never ever become a christian again i can never have the mercy of Christianity. So how is it that he says the only difference in Christianity is Christianity between Islam and Christianity is that Christianity offers mercy and peace when in fact it doesn't. It doesn't for that particular specific sin. Jesus' death on the cross cannot even forgive that sin. <laughs> so much for Jesus' death as a law on the cross being a law and a forgiveness and a mercy, a sign of a mercy. Come on, Dr. James White. Stop 
manipulating and misleading the people. So not only does Islam teach to stand up on your own feet and to face the own, your own consequence, it teaches true courage. It doesn't teach a selfish theology such as, oh, you just basically get away from your crime, just give some lip service and Jesus will pay for it. You see, this is barbaric. This is unethical. And to even com compare that to Islam, you made a false judgment by saying, oh, we Muslims do lip service too by making the shahada and we get away with it. Well, there's a difference between get away with it and at the same time putting that sin on another man, which is cowardice and making him pay for it. And, is, and in Islam, it, there isn't simply you just get away with it. Like I said in my original video, that we go through grave punishments. There are purifications in on the Day of Judgment when you stand before Allah. And there are also purifications in hellfire. That's the difference. That's the difference. No, you don't know the difference. <laughs>